Hello, my name is Naomichi Matsumoto, Department of Human Genetics, Yokohama City University in Japan. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the utility of a high long read whole genome sequencing in solving rare diseases. So here is a table showing that current next generation sequences. So we can use a uh, short read sequencer as well as a long read sequencer too. Among these, uh, Park Bio long read sequencing, SQL1 and 2, are very unique and very useful. Especially the SQL2 uh, throughput is now uh, 300 gigs. So uh, we are using this machine. Advantage of long read sequencing are it can read 10 KB or more, and then as a, it is a single molecule sequencing, uh, no amplification is needed, and uh, no template biases in data. For example, the high GC region can be easily read and especially the smart sequencing have a random error. This means that if we get the many read, and then we can abolish the random error. Disadvantage are high error rate in one read, like 85% of accuracy, and then in nanopore sequencer, strand bias is well known. And the uh, long read sequencing is still relatively expensive. So it is getting better. Stereotypic image of sequencing is long read for CNB and short read for SNB. However, uh, new technology, high fi long read sequencing, can target both CNB and SNB. In PacBio, two modes of smart sequencing are available. Left is continuous log and long read sequencing, CLR, and the accuracy is uh, 75 to 9% in one read. Right is hi fi read, in other words, uh, circular consensus sequencing, CCS. Um, by Getting a high fi read from three passes would be a Q20 accuracy, and then from eight passes would be a Q30 accuracy. This is totally different in accuracy. Back by the high fi long read uh, data can be analyzed in many ways, like here. PBSB detect structural variant and tandem genotype detect tandem repeat expansion in diseases. DNA arrange detect chromosomal rearrangement and structural variation. Google Deep variant can detect SNB and short indel. And WhatsApp can phase a small variant. Therefore, haplotyping is possible. So, these different algorithms are now available for HiFi data. We encounter a very interesting family like here. So uh, there is a affected twins in this family, and uh, both uh, twins show in syndromic intellectual disabilities. Uh, B and C shows uh, both patient at one year, and D and E shows both patient at two years. Uh, they show the land phase and the unilateral apoptosis. Actually, the side of apoptosis is different between two. 
and the uh, they both show that the uh, cervical spine fusion like uh, C2, C3 fusion and C5, C7 fusion in both. And the, we try to find that the pathogenic genetic change in these twins. And uh, we approached Torio analysis by using a whole exome sequencing. But unfortunately, we couldn't find any pathological changes in the genome. Here is a clinical table of both affected twins. Both patients show ptosis and facial dysmorphism like round face and uh, uh, hyperthyroidism, flat facial profile, down slanting parabellar fissures. They both have a strabismus and a spinal, a cervical spinal fusion. And neurologically, they do show the hypotonia, gross motor delay, language delay, and severe intellectual disabilities. Both have a seizures, EEG abnormalities, but the response to treatment was both really good. So, we applied a high-fi long read whole genome sequencing for one of patient to two and each parent. So, and the uh, two flow cells are used for patient to two and one flow cell are used for each parent. And uh, fortunately that the uh, Polymeda the reader bases are quite good, actually nearly a 500 gigabase, and the insert length mean is a six, seven, nearly a 17 to uh, 19 KB. And uh, regarding the hi-fi data, uh, to choose uh, mean coverage of read is 20x, and each parent you know, 10 to 11 read coverage. And the read length mean is 14 to 16 kb. And the uh, read quality, median read quality is uh, more than Q30 in all. That's quite successful in high five sequencing. And here is an analytic flow of these families. Actually, that the, we first use a smart analysis version 8 and a CCS data mapped to HG19, and then we get a CCS bump. And by using a PBSB, we, we could get a uh, joint code VCF uh, containing that. Uh, 50 base pair or more SVs, and then with an over to annotate. And uh, CCS BAM is also used for deep variant to get the SNFB and the small indels and VCF. And the VCF plus aligned BAM are used for WhatsApp 0.818 and then we could get phase of VCF. And then these data uh, can be analyzed uh, manually by IGB. Here is a result of a, a structural variation analysis in patient to two. So actually this patient has a, a 10,000 deletion, 15,000 insertion, 63 inversion, and 1,500 uh, duplications. By using a parental data, we, we could only focus on the noble ones, and then that the deletion insertion could be around 500 in the inversion 7, and the duplication turned out to be uh, 
uh, 180. And if we really focused on the gene involved uh, SV, then we could only get less than 20 structural variations. And then let's go into the detail of these structural variants. Here is a table of uh, pathogenic structural barrier candidate. All the rest, including uh, involved gene. So by looking at these, uh, one gene quickly attract our attention, uh, BRPF1, because it shows a PRI score is one and its mutation cause intellectual developmental disorder with dysmorphic facies and ptosis. Together with uh, CPNE9. And also that we realize that, that there's another call, especially that the deletion call of the same gene, PRPF1 and CPNE9. So other gene all shows that the uh, no high PLI score. Therefore, first we decided to focus on the BRPF1. So first we go back to the exome data and then that uh, we see a DDO coverage of uh, uh, this family and then we do see any significant DDO coverage change in patient comparing to the father and mother. We also use a you know, copy number detection to the XHMM and again we don't see any copy number variation around uh, CPNE9 and the PRPF1. Therefore deletion call might be might be some sort of a miscode or false positive. Then uh, we go to the uh, haplotype data by using IGB at around CPNE9 and BRPF1 region. And then we could successfully see the normal chromosome in one, and the other is inverted chromosome, actually. 12 KB copy neutral inversion there involving a CPNE9 and a PRPF1. And uh, to read completely spanning the inversion. Then we go to a literature search and then we found that in, uh, two important papers published in 2017 in American Journal of Human Genetics that the PRPF1 cause syndromic intellectual disability associated with apoptosis. Uh, this data completely fit our family's phenotype. We go back to uh, genome analysis and then that the uh, first we precisely characterize a 12 KB inversion especially that uh, inversion breakpoint analysis and the uh, it's very easy to design that uh, PCR primer to amplify a junction fragment and as you can see in the right row, the junction fragment can be easily amplified by using these primers. We also perform that the southern protein and the inversion fragment are clearly shown like left lower uh, image. And then that the, this junction fragment PCR product are sequenced and then we could get perfect junction fragment sequencing sequences. We also confirm that the inversion breakpoint are 
very much identical between the two affected twin patients. This is a complete haplotyping at around the inversion. And the uh, patient and the father and the mother's haplotyping at uh, displayed. And in patient, one normal chromosome, one inverted chromosome there. And uh, father's haplotyping uh, could get a little one and a little two completely. And the mother's haplotyping could get a little three and a little four completely. And then that these uh, data clearly show that normal allele of patient derived from father's allele one and the inverted chromosome uh, derived from the mother's allele three. And these haplotyping are uh, easily done by using uh, uh, these uh, polymorphic markers shown in below. Now all of these data published in genomics. And the, let's go back to the PBSBs and uh, uh, parameter issues. So in all the version of uh, PBSP, uh, especially that the inversion signature is detected if a single read is split into three alignment with different origination, like plus minus plus strand or minus plus minus strand. This means that the uh, one read should contain the complete uh, set over inversion uh, factors like uh, uh, inserted DNA should have a complete length of uh, uh, inversion. And the uh, all the versions of the PBSP should have uh, this complete set of inversion information in one read. And then that the there is some sort of calling parameters and the P parameters, it was important. And like a, a abnormal read percentage among the total read, like 5% or 10%. So first 10% and then we don't see any inversion call. But instead, an erroneous deletion called here. And the, but instead, an erroneous deletion called here. And the, next, we uh, change the parameter a little bit non stringent and 5%. And then we again analyze PBSP old version, and then we could successfully detect PRPF1 and CPNE1 in version. Yeah, because 5% uh, is lower, and then actually, that uh, two inverted to read out of uh, 22 total read, uh, the percentage is 9%. Therefore, over than 5% uh, inversion allele were detected. And uh, still, we see uh, uh, same genes in uh, deletions called here. Uh, we contacted a uh, park bio and a supporting team uh, reporting this program. So, and the pack bio team kindly update the PBSB version. And they actually new version support on spanning in version and fix the deletion bound. So we can now use a new PBSB and then we try. 
and then we didn't change the parameter p still 10 little stringent and uh, the new version successfully called this inversion and uh, interestingly as uh, uh, protocol changed that the uh, abnormal allele was now nine read and the, among the 26 total read therefore uh, p value is over 34 percent more than 10. so this was successfully done by Pakbao T and then of course and then they do fix the deletion problem I'd like to thank Pakbao supporting team thank you very much uh, next I'm gonna show you uh, how to use the haplotyping data in clinical setting so here is another project and uh, we do have uh, two families with distinct congenital anomalies so both uh, families patients have a similar stag to mutation de novo and both patient has uh, termination codons like here and case A, case one, uh, show a severe phenotype like a multiple congenital anomaly, and then she was terminated at 21 gestational weeks. And case two was born, uh, and she showed a white matter hypoplasia, mild ID and DD, and hearing loss. So, and uh, importantly, that the STAG2 is x linked to chrome x linked to gene so and then both affected the patient or girl so we saw that the uh, the difference of a cbns between the case one and the case two might be due to uh, different x inactivation patterns and then we checked the inactivation in both patient and then we found that the both patients show that the highly skewed X inactivation, like a 93% and 96%. And the case one's uh, inactivation occurred in paternal chromosome, and case two's inactivation occurs in maternal chromosome. Next, uh, we check the cDNA in case two by RT-PCR uh, of a cDNA derived from a LCL. And uh, we could confirm that the uh, only a wild type allele expression in patient LCL. Therefore, favorable X inactivation skewing occurred in case two. However, uh, in case one, uh, living cell was available, unavailable. Therefore, we did alternative tip approach. So we chose uh, HiFi long read whole genome sequencing in case one to obtain that the haplotype data around STAG2. And then that, um, that trial was successful and then we could get uh, complete haplotyping data at around that the stag to mutation. Actually, uh, the patient's uh, mutation occurred a little too, and uh, by genotyping of a parent, uh, could confirm that the uh, a little too mutant allele was derived from the father. In the previous XN activation studies, paternal chromosome was inactivated. Therefore, case one also has a favorable skewing. Unfortunately, uh, by mutation type, as well as uh, by uh, X inactivation pattern, 
both uh, could not explain the patient phenotype difference, but such a approach may be useful for other uh, f uh, diseases, especially having X-linked gene abnormalities. This is the final slide, and then that the total based high fi long read whole genome sequencing solved um, exome negative cases. And the PBSB efficiently narrowed down the pathogenic SV. And uh, the number 12KB copy neutral inversion disrupt PRP, uh, BRPF1. And the 12KB inversion occurred on the maternal chromosome. And uh, we found a bug in PBSB 2.2.2. And then uh, non spanning inversion can be detected by PBSB version 2.4.0. Haplotype phasing may, be, may provide critically useful information. And uh, I would like to thank all my teams, especially that Dr. Mizuguchi uh, did. Uh, uh, inversion families analysis. Thank you very much for your attention.